Hello friends, Martin here and welcome to this new tutorial on my channel detailing yet another technique that I use often when making my short film Heroes of Bronze. Today something a bit different, we'll have a look at this awesome tool called World Creator which is great at creating detailed landscapes uh, like the one you see down here. And that's actually what we're going to be creating today. In the last several years I tried out a lot of ways to create large scale terrain models. I went through software like World Machine or View. I also used tons of Blender add-ons but I never really had the feeling like yes this is the workflow I want to use. Until recently that is because some time ago I found World Creator and I immediately fell in love. The main difference from other software I tried is simply that it's so very fast, intuitive and layer based as opposed to node based which for someone who grew up using After Effects is always a plus and still it's pretty robust in what it allows you to create. Also it works very well together with Blender which is very important for me since I make my short film in it. Finally it's cheap, you basically pay a one time fee of about $300 for the professional version and $150 for the standard version. You can even email the authors of the software and they might give you a trial version for free. And there's no subscription or anything, so you just pay and you're good to go. In other words I really recommend this software since in my opinion it offers the best balance between cost and functionality. One warning though, this tutorial is not really an introduction series, instead I want to quickly show you just the necessary stuff so you can quickly create your own terrain and export it to Blender. So after you get your copy of World Creator, log in and fire it up for the first time, you'll be greeted with this screen. The functions you're used to finding in the top part of the screen are in this case here on the left allowing you to start a new project, open a saved scene, toggle certain stuff on and off and take screenshots. It's all pretty intuitive even if you don't know your way around it uh, but it's not really necessary for our current project. By the way you can move around in World Creator by hitting WASD like in any first person game. Right mouse button rotates the camera, middle mouse pans and Q and E allows you to go up and down. So let's now go here to the right side of the screen where among other stuff our terrain options, texture settings and also our export options lie. Let's start by making our terrain larger, you can increase the resolution here and I want it to be twice the size so let's type in 4096 just that we can squeeze in more detail. If you don't care about the type of terrain you're creating and you just want to experiment just leave this default type or you can even go through the random seed here. Uh, however, in my case, I want to have this higher peak in the middle of my scene. So let's check this box here and it will allow you to create a custom base shape for our landscape. If you hit edit shape, you'll be able to grab these little diamond shaped points and adjust the height of any point you want. And what's awesome is, is that all this is non-destructive so you will be able to return back here later and edit the shape even after you add all the various effects to the terrain. Which is actually exactly what we are going to do so don't stress this phase too much now. Alright, when you're done with the shape of your terrain switch to this very important tab here called filters. Here is where the magic happens. You can create various layers and turn them on and off enabling and disabling various sets of effects. So let's make our layer and name it for example base filters and then go ahead and add our first filter. You will get into this tab full of various effects you can choose. We have basic filters in a folder called general, then some special design filters and special effects and then depending on what type of terrain you're after we have effects suited for canyons, eroded terrain, terraces, desert dunes, plateaus and in each category there are variations of the effect so there is definitely enormous amount of options here. In our case let's start with this effect distort filter which will shape our terrain a bit less blobby and it kinda will lose its default generic look. Of course this is not the effect we are after so let's play around with the various level strength here and also lower the length of the effect. 
obviously that helped a lot. You can also play with the strength, but I think the default value is quite okay. When you're done, click on add and close down here and the effect will be added to your layer stack. So now our terrain is randomized, you can turn the effect on and off here to see the result. Alright, let's go ahead and add our next effect called Rugged. It adds a lot of little surface details to it as well as sort of beating it to a more damaged look with ridges and sharper edges. You can actually leave everything as is and click add and close. Next layer we'll add will be these hills mountains effect where we lower the strength slightly and then lower this level 3 step and then raise these 3 and maybe lower the step 7. It's really up to you and at this point I'm more or less improvising, which is something this software is great for. Add and close and then continue with another effect called Ridged, which no surprise there, adds ridges to our geometry. And as you can see how all the effects we've added are combining together to create this unique effect. And there are of course millions of ways how you can combine these layers and their settings to achieve unique effects. In this one, raise the strength and experiment with the rich settings, uh, minimum and maximum count number and also the max angle. In the end, I was happy with really almost the default values and slightly higher general strength. You can see that when you turn it on and off, there's quite a big difference. Since I want these lower parts of my terrain to look like they're covered in snow or sand, or generally some flat material, let's use this canyon sand cover filter as our next layer. If you slide through this strength slider, you will be able to see the effect the filter creates, basically filling and flattening some of the ridged regions, making it look like they're covered with sand or snow. Let's click on add and close and then actually try something new. With each new layer we add, you can actually choose how it's going to be distributed over the terrain. Here I do want my valleys to be filled with snow, but my higher mountain peaks to not have this effect. You can achieve that by using this height select checkbox here and lower this high number to limit the max height where the effect takes place. If we click it on and off, we can now see that while the lower regions are flattened, nothing happens to the higher ones. A very useful option indeed. For our next layer, choose this smooth ridges, which at its current state is really too much, but if you lower the strength and length, it will make the edges of the mountain a bit smoother, since in reality they probably would not be that perfectly sharp. Alright, remember I mentioned we can go back anytime we want and adjust the base of our terrain. So let's do it now. Going back to this base tab up here, click on the edit shape option and start raising and lowering the points here until you are happy with the shape. When you're done, you can just go back to the filter tab and continue adding new ones. So for the next effect, we add erosion, one of the most important filters you'll use in World Creator, because it always adds so much realism to the result. It is basically an effect simulating the way wind, water or other forces gradually damage a terrain. Let's lower the sharpness here, make the wideness higher. Also, let's limit our height effect so that the erosion takes place mostly in our mountain peak. And to get rid of this sharp edge where the height selection region ends, you can use this height smoothness, feathering the region and thus removing the edge. I think this looks cool, though let's make the sharpness a bit higher after all. Now add one more layer, this one called Erosion Fluvial, which is mostly associated with the effects rivers and various streams due to the landscape. 
but here it adds one more layer of nice detail so let's use it even though we don't really have rivers here uh, don't go overboard with the strength let's actually lower it significantly And of course, just as with the base terrain shape, you can go back to any of the previously added filters and adjust them as you see fit. It will be a bit slower than at the beginning, since the system needs to compute all the overlapping effects, but this gives you great options to customize everything. And here we are! I think this terrain has quite a nice amount of details, definitely enough to suit my needs. So now let's get exporting. To do that you simply go up here and click on this icon and you get to the export menu. Here just choose this height map option, change the format to OBJ, lower the resolution to half or eighth of the original and don't forget to check the quads option here. Then just click export and save your OBJ file wherever you want. Yep, it's that simple. In the same way you switch to normal map type, PNG format and export this texture. Here in this texture tab up here you can then export some extra texture information like this ambient occlusion map here. You can adjust it to your liking, making it more or less smooth and changing the type of effect it has. Uh, then export it in the directory you used for the normal map. And with that we are done with this part and we are ready to get to Blender. Here in our favorite software use the file import obj option and bring in your terrain model. You can scale it down if it's too large and if you find it too slow to work with this high poly model consider exporting a new obj with the export resolution set to 8th or 16th of the original world creator resolution. This model is exported with half the original resolution and it has 4 million polys which is quite a lot. Anyway, let's continue with this resolution, create a camera. By the way, in Blender 2.8, the new shortcut for entering the flight mode is shift tilde key, which is the key below escape. With it, let's place the camera where I want it, somewhere here, to achieve the same image as we have in the banner of the video. Also, let's create a sun lamp with an intensity of 1, And then duplicate it, uh, push it where you want it and rotate it so that it faces the main mountain. Also you can scale it up so that you can see it better. Increase the strength a lot. Rotate it some more and also increase this blend option here so that the edges of the light are softer. Basically I want this highlight in the middle of the landscape so that my mountain pops up. For the mountain's shader, let's add in an image file and plug it into the principal BSDF normal socket here. Of course, add in a normal map node between the image texture node and BSDF node and be sure that you have the image texture set to non-color data. Then open our normal map texture and choose the image that you exported from World Creator. And that's almost it. Let's try a quick test render now. First change the color management to a different mode, for example this film type with medium high contrast. I quickly rendered everything and achieved this result. If you want to add more variation to the surface color, you can plug in the ambient occlusion map into your base color socket. And also to fill the dark spots on our render, let's just raise this world surface color here to a lighter color. And with that done, you can of course create a new camera by duplicating the original one, uh, set it as active camera here, then hit shift till the key and go a little closer to your mountain, maybe change the focal length and render from this angle so that you actually can see all the detail that World Creator provided us with. I think it's very cool. 
So I do hope you liked this quick tutorial. And if you did, don't hesitate to write a comment and let me know if you want more tutorials for World Creator because we haven't even scratched the surface of what this tool can do. Also, this tutorial actually originated from a poll I published on my Patreon. So if you want to influence my tutorials in the future, deciding on which one I'll do next, you can check my site there and maybe become a patron. Apart from the polls, you'll get various bonuses based on your patron tier, like free PNG alphas, assets from my film, and even exclusive tutorials and behind the scenes for my artwork. I also provide my project files, exported textures and final OBJ of this terrain here. And with that, it will be all for today my friends. Hope this tutorial was useful and see you next time. Martin out.